there's been many deadly train disasters in the past. From the great train wreck of 1918 in Nashville, Tennessee of the United States, which killed 101 people when two Nashville, Chattanooga, and St. Louis railroad trains collided head-on. Quinton's Hill, Britain's worst rail disaster, which killed 226 when a local train was struck head-on by a troop train special as an express train tripped on the wreckage seconds later. Or even the infamous tragedy of Ufa in the Soviet Union when a natural gas line exploded as two trains met killing 575 people. But there's one disaster, often called the worst train wreck of all time. Only this time, it wouldn't be human error or mechanical failure, but nature itself having its way with the railroad. It was known as the Sri Lanka train disaster. It's a busy holiday atmosphere at the Ambalangoda train station. Train number 50, the Matara Express, meaning Queen of the Sea, pulls up to the platform, overloaded with passengers. The train consists of Locomotive 591, named Manitoba, a Canadian province. The reason for its Canadian name was because it's a Sri Lanka Railways Class M2A built in 1956 by General Motors Division of Canada as a Model G12. It bears a lot of resemblance and the same prime mover to EMD's GP7 and GP9s. It's crewed by engineer Jankara Fernando and his brakeman Sivalo Ganathan. The locomotive is pulling eight coaches carrying around 1,700 passengers total, traveling from Sri Lanka's largest city of Colombo to the city of Gaul on the south of the island. The train is so overloaded, the doors are jammed shut, and most people are standing in the alleyway. It is Sunday, December 26, 2004, Boxing Day. For most passengers, however, today is Poya Day a Buddhist holiday, celebrating the full moon. Many use the opportunity to travel down south to some of the country's beautiful resorts, or to meet up with families. Today, however, it would be different. Of course, on-time performance isn't really that common on the Sri Lanka railways, but then again, nor is it the case in many other countries, including first world countries, especially the US and UK, but nonetheless, to accommodate the excess crowds, station personnel are on standby at stations along the line to help load and unload passengers as quickly and efficiently as possible. Everything was routine, that is, until approximately 9 a.m. when a massive 9.3 magnitude megathrust earthquake rocks below on the floor of the Indian Ocean, northwest of the island of Sumatra, Indonesia. This in turn throws up huge tsunami waves, some reaching a maximum of 30 meters in height. Sri Lanka's seismic monitoring station at Palakeli registered the earthquake within minutes, but did not consider it possible for a tsunami to reach the island. When tsunami reports reached the dispatching office, in Maradena, officials panicked and made several calls, warning of the danger looming toward the island nation. They were able to halt eight other trains running on the coastal line, but were unable to reach the Matara Express, which continued its journey down the coast. Efforts to halt the train at stations like Mbalangoda failed because all the station personnel were assisting with the train and no one was available to answer the phone until after the train had departed. This meant the train crew and passengers had no idea what was about to hit them. Attempts to reach personnel at stations further down south failed as well as they had either fled from their posts or had already drowned by the waves. Only seven miles south of Ambalangoda, the train is forced to stop 
Water surged around the consist, and an alarm sounded to alert the population about the increase in water levels. Hundreds of locals, believing the train to be secure on the rails, climbed on top of the cars to avoid being swept away. Others huddled behind it along the sides, hoping it would act like a massive shield and deflect the current away. The first waves quickly flooded the coaches, causing panic amongst the passengers as water reached as high as their necks. Then, a sign of hope. The water levels drop, and the seawaters recede out back to the coast. It seems like a miracle. What not many people knew, this was a clear indicator that a massive tsunami was approaching. One that sucks up the water before it strikes. Ten minutes later, the third and biggest wave strikes. Reaching 30 meters in height, it slams into the coast and into the train. The wave was so strong that not only were people crushed around the consist by falling debris and trees, but the waves were able to lift the train off the track and throw it toward the nearby houses. Locomotive 591 was swept away for over 100 meters or 330 feet away from the track and coming to a rest in a swamp, killing the engineer and his brakeman. Passengers were either killed or drowned as the coaches were thrown from the track and to make matters worse, those who chose to stand on top of the coaches were more often than not violently thrown and either crushed or drowned in the ensuing chaos. Those who took shelter behind the train cars were instantly crushed by the coaches that they thought would shield them. It's estimated the wave was over 2-3 to three meters higher than the top of the train itself. A few minutes later, everything was quiet. Most passengers quickly drowned in the coaches, others barely escaped with their lives. What was once a small village of a small country had turned into a desolate wasteland, with bodies littering the area, injured people barely clinging to life, with some later succumbing to drowning or their severe injuries, buildings smashed, flooded with water, landmarks slept away. Emergency services and the military were so overwhelmed that immediate rescue was not possible. In fact, the Sri Lankan authorities had no idea where the train was for several hours until it was spotted by a military helicopter around 4 p.m., finding it thrown across the landscape as if the train cars were mere toys. The local emergency services were out of commission and it took a long time before the desperately needed help could finally arrive. When the said help did arrive, one day later, they are confronted with not just the deadliest train disaster in history, but one of the worst tsunamis of all time. Many bodies were not able to be found for over a week. Some families even descended on the area by foot, determined to find their loved ones for themselves. It's difficult to find an official death tally, but according to the Sri Lankan authorities, only about 150 people on the train survived, including one of the guards. The estimated death toll was at least 1,700 people, and possibly over 2,000, although only 900 bodies were ever recovered, as many were swept away out to sea, never to be seen again, or taken away by relatives. The nearby town of Paralina was completely destroyed, losing nearly 90% of its population. All but 10 buildings still stood their ground from the waves. Badagama Samatathero, a Buddhist monk, helped perform funeral rites along with his students. More than 200 of the bodies retrieved were not able to be identified or claimed, and they were buried three days later in a Buddhist ceremony near the torn railway line. The Boxing Day Tsunami, as it was later called, would go on to claim a total of 228,000 lives, 
with 170,000 coming from Indonesia alone. 36,000 came from Sri Lanka. The waves reached as far as Thailand, India, the Maldives, and even Somalia. Despite the disaster, residents of Paralela stood strong. They rebuilt their battered village and received massive humanitarian aid across the world. Locomotive 591, the Manitoba, and two of the damaged coaches were salvaged and repaired. They were all back in service by December 26, 2008, four years after the disaster. A wave was added to the locomotive's livery as a memorial, and every year since then, the now famous engine takes part in a religious ceremony and a memorial excursion held to remember those who lost their lives. The surviving conductor, Wanagaratni Karuntalaki, still works with the railway as of today as well. 18 years later, the Sri Lanka disaster is still remembered as the worst train wreck of all time. <laughs>